Hello, this is Dave with Mountain Maple. Welcome to our second video on the Mountain Maple Smart Sap Sucker Unit, or S3 for short. Today we're going to simulate how the S3 operates in normal day-to-day -day operation on a maple sapling. Uh, but first, what is the S3 and what does it do? Well, in short, it's a system that allows automatic control of a diaphragm type pump that connects to your sap line to draw a vacuum. It's designed for the small maple producer or hobbyist. You can use your own pump or we can supply you with one of your own choice. Vacuum has been shown to double or even triple the amount of sap you can get from your existing taps, and that means more syrup. We'll talk more about that later, but let's jump right into the fun stuff. So here's the unit here. Um, major pieces are, um, there's a shear flow pump. This one's a 12-volt um, um, model 4008. Um, we have the um, sap outlet. Um, it's going into a garden hose. On the inlet side, we have a strainer. Um, we've got some fittings. These are PVC fittings. Um, we also have stainless. The PVC are a little bit lower cost. And we have our incoming sap line coming into the right of the T. And we have a bypass valve. Um, the bypass valve is um, is open when the pump is off and it's going to allow sap to flow through gravity. Um, right now I just have it connected to a, um, a, a bucket for, for recirculating. Um, and then of course we have the controller, you know, the S3 controller, kind of the brains of the unit. Um, let's go through uh, some of the operations of this uh, really quickly. So you can see on the top line of the display um, we have uh, some status information. Um, in the upper left corner, we have uh, 32 degrees as the temperature. Uh, we have a battery voltage, 12.3. Status is okay. Um, the second line, we, we have different statuses depending on, on, uh, on where we're at. Um, right now, we can see it's too cold for sap. And we have a last on time of um, five minutes and 32 seconds. That was that was from a previous run today. Now, what I'm going to do, the, the temperature probe is disconnected, and instead I have a knob. And the knob is going to simulate the, the, the temperature um, that, that you would see in the, in the sugar bush. Um, so right now, my, uh, my turn on temperature um, is at 34 degrees, and these are programmable. Um, incidentally, there's um, a row of buttons here. Uh, we'll talk about those later, but you can you can change any of the uh, the settings uh, using those buttons um, right in your own backyard. So um, let's bring this up to 34 degrees, and um, and we'll see what's going to happen here. So 34 degrees, we're going to see a change in the last line. We're going to see a warm up. It said uh, wait 20 minutes. Um, it still has our last on time. So what this is, this is a warm-up timer. And the timer uh, is actually a three-stage timer. And the the um, delay will depend on what the temperature was last night or the previous night. Um, if it goes down to 30 degrees, we'll wait 20 minutes for the trees to warm up. If it if it goes a little colder, we'll wait 40. If it gets kind of in the low 20s, uh, we'll, we'll wait 80 minutes. So um, this is a little bit boring. Let, let's go ahead and, and um, speed this uh, warm-up timer. There's another setting at 36 degrees um, that it hits a, uh, an override temperature. And what, what happens when I hit 36 degrees is it'll, it'll skip the warm-up and it'll just turn on. So let me bring this up to 36 here. We're at 36. Okay, now we have a warm startup, activating valve, and you can hear the pump turning on right now. Okay, so what happened here was the, um, the, the valve closed and the pump turned on. Okay, so now this allows, allows us to draw a vacuum on our sap line here. Um, I have a gauge Right here, it's starting to increase. You can hear a little bit, a little bit of a change of pitch in the uh, in the pump as as the uh, as the pump actually starts to see some sap flow through it. 
it'll uh, it'll it'll generate increased vacuum. And you can see on my um, my pump outlet, we're just recirculating into this bucket here. And you can see my sap coming out. Um, there's not too much flow because it's only a only a three sixteenths tubing. So right now it'll sit like this. Um, you know, it'll, it'll run all day like this. Uh, we have a run time of one minute. Um, we've got a display of uh, the, uh, the uh, current going through the pump, which is a, is a DC current. That's just kind of uh, helpful in um, figuring out how long your, your battery's going to last. Um, our, our vacuum has gone up a little bit. It's 22 or so. Um, I've seen um, almost 25 on this, this setup. So let, let's go ahead and um, run the temperature down. Okay, if the temperature went up higher, we would just sit there and run. Um, we're gonna. Nothing's gonna happen until we hit the turn off point, which I have set to 34 degrees. So let's go to that and. Um, Oh, by the way, on the battery voltage, if uh, for the DC pumps, if my uh, I, I can I can set a uh, a cutoff limit for the battery, where if the battery goes low, it'll turn the pump off and open up the valve so that you don't end up with a stopped pump and, and no sap flow. That's another safety feature. So let's um, we're at 32 degrees now. That's my turn off point. You can see the bypass valve is open. And the pump is turned off. And um, if you notice, the valve opened first, and then the pump turned off a few seconds later. And what that does is that allows us to draw air up through the uh, bypass line and clear any sap out of the pump, so that it so that it won't freeze up. It doesn't it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of uh, of sap in the pump, but you don't want it you don't want it full and and, and risk um, risk anything freezing. So right now it's at um, it's at 32 degrees. The um, there's also some buttons down here. Um, this is a uh, manual override button, and you can see it turned green. And we did it activating the valve, and the pump's turned on. So that allows us to turn the the pump on manually, um, regardless of temperature. If we want, um, it'll just sit there and continue running so um, so you, you'd have to go and, and, and turn it off. Um, another one, one of the protection features is um, this this switch and fuse are, are in series with the power feed for the for the pump. Now let's say something happens like I, I blow a fuse okay so I just turn the pump off and my screen's gone blurry for a minute but uh, it'll clear up. Okay, so what happened there was um, my uh, the the uh, pump obviously turned off because of the switch, but um, it recorded a power fault and also opened the bypass valve. So what will happen there is you know in, in case your pump um, you know has has a jam or something and, and blows a fuse or or even if the wire breaks, um, the controller will will recognize that. And um, you also you also saw a red light on there, um, and it'll it'll uh, turn the open the bypass valve so that so that you um, don't lose any sap. Um, there's also an off button if it's if it's running and the off button is pressed, then it'll it'll uh, it'll turn off, and you might want to do that if um, if the unit is. Um, if it's running, if you know, especially if you're battery powered, if it's if it's running and it's at the end of the day and there's no sap flowing, maybe you want to conserve the battery power. Um, so I just want to talk for a minute about uh, vacuum. I, I spoke earlier about the increase in sap production you can get by using vacuum. There's been research done at UVM, the Proctor Research Center, that's shown that. Applying vacuum to a maple tap can uh, double the amount of sap that, that you're getting per tap, or even more, um, compared with a bucket or, or a conventional gravity tubing. So depending on the number of taps that you set out, the vacuum system can, 
quickly pay for itself um, and allow you to produce more syrup. There's, there's a lot of other advantages to tubing if you haven't used it before. It's a uh, pretty low initial cost. Um, you get cleaner sap, extended season, longer runs during the day, and you don't get buckets full of bugs in the in the late season. Uh, I've also found that red maples respond quite well to vacuum, um, even even low vacuum levels. So if you have some reds that you don't tap or some that are down by a swamp that that um, never ran well with buckets, you, you might be surprised what adding a little vacuum will do. Um, for the smaller producer, um, if you've decided to go the vacuum route, um, a conventional vacuum system and releaser might not be practical. Um, you might be able to pick up a used one, but um, they they do have some some drawbacks um, for the for the smaller producer. Um, and, and and in this case, the diaphragm pump is a is a good alternative. The um, the S3 controller unit will automate um, the the pump operation of um, and it'll work with um, pretty much any diaphragm type pump, such as the SureFlow. Or um, a Bosworth Guzzler. It's um, designed for the maple industry, and um, with one of these, you won't have to be there to turn the unit on and off. It'll it'll do it automatically. Um, then the uh, the SureFlow pumps are good for about a hundred taps, and the Guzzler units they've got a new double diaphragm pump that they say is rated for for uh, for eight hundred taps. So let's say you've gotten a, a diaphragm pump. Um, you don't really need the controller for it to work, but if you don't have one, you need to ensure that the pump uh, turns on and off at the right time and, and the right temperature. You could possibly damage a pump and lose a day's sap flow if the pump tries to turn on when it's frozen or if it uh, jams or, or anything. And for many of us who have full-time jobs, being, being around to turn the unit on and off at the right time and temperature is, is just not possible. Um, you know, a simple solution would be to um, connect up a thermostat, but you know, in many cases that's that's insufficient. Also, um, the S3 unit will automate the turn on and turn off, and um, it's, al it's also able to help prevent freeze damage, um, as, as we saw with the by use of the bypass valve. Um, so the bottom line is that you can get increased sap production and more syrup. Um, I'll have a video later on to show how to change the settings by yourself to be able to tailor the system to your to your sugar bush. Um, we are offering um, a few free loaner units to uh, select customers for the for the upcoming season um, in exchange for. Uh, feedback on how well it's doing and uh, you know, what you'd like to see changed, whatever. Um, and we will have a limited number of units available for purchase um, in January at a, at a reduced introductory rate. Um, contact me before about the 1st of February before things get busy if you're, if you're interested. So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, happy sugaring everyone.